welcome back to hopefully the in final installment of Logic. In the last couple videos, we talked about the basic building blocks, and then we took a closer look at the conditional statement, and now we're finally ready to start putting it all together and using those building blocks and using truth tables and symbolic logic, and hopefully try to take an argument and really test whether it is valid or not. Um, more on what valid means in a second, but let's look at the argument that I picked out for us to work on today. If I get a dog, then I will take care of it. If I take care of it, then I will learn responsibility. I get a dog, therefore I will learn responsibility. So we've got two general types of statements here. We've got the ones that are above the line that are kind of like, here are the facts of the case. Um, and these are what we call premises or premises, however you want to say it. They are the, the background info that the little pieces that we'll try to put together in order to get to the therefore statement, which we call our conclusion. Now, what the uh, what a valid argument is is basically saying if in all of the cases where every single premise is true, the conclusion also has to be true. That is what a valid argument is. And again, we're looking at we're going to be using symbolic logic. We're going to be looking at the structure behind it. So we are going to first translate this into variables, into symbols, and get rid of all the fluff. So if I get a dog, we can let P be the statement I get a dog. Q is, in that case, I will take care of it. If I take care of it, that's already been a statement. That's statement Q. So we don't need to make another variable for that statement. Then I will learn responsibility. That's going to be R. I get a dog. That's P. We already got that one. Therefore, I will learn responsibility. R. We've got all of our statements here. Now it's just, what building blocks are we using? So for structure, if I get a dog, so if P, then I will take care of it, which was Q. If I take care of it, then I will learn responsibility, which we determined is R. I get a dog is the statement P. Therefore, and we use three dots for therefore, I will learn responsibility is now, you might already be able to see that this argument is valid. You can kind of follow the steps a little bit. We know P is true. P is true, therefore Q is true. Okay. Q is true, therefore R is true, so R. Kind of makes sense. But let's actually use a truth table to figure out that same conclusion, that same test for validity. And now we get to the fun part of the very long, very arduous table. So, to remind us, I will write out the statement again. So we have P is Q, Q is R, P, therefore R. So we have three statements. We've got P, we've got Q, we've got R. I'm going to start with just that. So now, remember, this is the first time where we actually have three statements. So remember, the number of rows in this case is two to the third power, or two times two times two is eight in this context. So we're gonna go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. And then we double it for Q, so true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then we double it again for P. True, 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 false, 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 false. And that, you can go by exhaustion, that is all of the possibilities for combinations of truth values. And so, now we need all of the different pieces. We already have P and R. 
That's a good start. We just need P implies Q and Q implies R. So P implies Q. So remember, the only case where P implies Q is false is if P is true and Q is false. So our third row is false, our fourth row is false, and everything else is true. Either by actually being true or by being vacuously true. And then we've got Q implies R. And so now, make sure you're looking at the correct columns, Q implies R. So we've got true, true implies false is false, false implies true is true, false implies false is true, true implies true is true, true implies false is false, and then we've got true and true. So we've got P implies Q, I'll check that out. Q implies R. For, sake, for um, E's sake, I'm going to go ahead and copy P and R again just so it looks a little bit neater. So true, 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 false, 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 false. One of the hardest things to do with truth tables is make sure everything's like on a straight line. So it might get a little messy and I apologize. Um, you really need like lined paper for this. And then R again is true, false, true, false. Now, one thing I see a lot of people do for ease is they'll put like a double line here just to say, hey, here's my conclusion. So, here we go. We have our three premises, and I'm just gonna number them one, two, and three. One, two, three. And we have our conclusion. Actually, I'll stick with green for that. I'm gonna label that C for conclusion. What we want to do is we want to go through and just look to where all three of the premises are true. And I'm going to circle those rows. So our first row is all true for the three premises. The second row has a false. The third row has a false. The fourth row has a false. Oh, see, I did go off of the line. There we go, there we go. And then we've got the fifth row has false. All of them actually have false. So this one actually worked out really nicely. There's only one case where all three of the statements are true. And we notice that in that case, the conclusion also happens to be true, which is good. That means that this is a valid argument. If, for example, this turned out to be false, then we would have what's called an invalid argument because there is something in the structure to where all three of our basic facts that we're trying to put together are true, but the conclusion that is reached is not true. And that's a problem. And so that's kind of what you want to look for when you're constructing these big arguments. Now, another note I want to make before signing off here. Um, a valid argument does not necessarily make a sound argument. Now, sound is probably what, probably the meaning of logic that you thought of when I first introduced the concept of logic. It means, does it make sense? Here's an easy one. plus 3 equals 6, then the sky is blue. 2 plus 3 equals 6, therefore the sky is blue. In other words, you've got if P then Q, P therefore Q. Obviously, doesn't really make sense because 2 plus 3 does not in fact equal 6, it in fact equals 5. The conclusion is true, the sky is blue most days when it's nice and sunny and wonderful out. <laughs> but 2 plus 3 doesn't equal 6. This is what, well actually, if you were to do the truth table and that kind of same process where you see if the premises are true, is the conclusion also true? This turns out to be a valid argument. The structure itself works. 
even though one of the premises is, is, is nuts. <laughs> it's crazy. And so it's a valid argument. It's what we call not sound because it doesn't really make sense when you add the context back in. So remember, really the big takeaway here is mathematical logic is a good indicator of the structure of an argument. Because you're taking away all of the context, all of the words, all of the, um, the emotional uh, foreplay into it, but it really gets at the structure. And you can really tell whether the structure is good or the structure is bad. You also have to look if you want an overall good argument as to whether the premises make sense. Um, but that is not a discussion of mathematics. That's more a discussion of every other field. Um, but it's an interesting uh, concept to take arguments that you find in other disciplines or find in the news and then try to uh, look at it symbolically, see if it makes sense from that, and then you can also look at the premises and see if those, in fact, make sense. And so there we go. That is logic, uh, and hopefully you saw some logic in that discussion. So thank you so much for tuning in.